Hey guys! So, I hope this is working. My internet is upgraded and I, I hope it's really working and gonna be fine. So, I hope it's okay. So, today is Thursday, but I'm doing my whine about it on Thursday because we were busy showing and we were practicing last night under the lights so that's always super fun okay great thanks arthur <laughs> and i had a great talk with jess and duke is going great so i will fill you in all about that too so that's exciting um so yeah we rode under the lights last night which was really fun and yeah showing in corona times is different and i can't recognize anybody with the mask and then the glasses and the hats i i don't know who's who so People are saying hello to me and then I feel bad because I'm not sure I know who it is. But grateful to be showing at all. So happy to be able to do what we love. And I just want to thank all the show organizers for keeping the show going on. So that's really fun. Um, what I'm going to talk about tonight <laughs> is, you know, dealing with disappointment at a horse show. <laughs> So I did not have the ride I wanted tonight or today. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about that and how to cope with that. Because, you know, as we joke about um, second place is the first loser. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's just my competitive side talking. Uh, no, but, you know, it really is about understanding where you are with your horse and what what the real victory is like sometimes winning is not actually being in first place you know it's sometimes even just having a good ride but that was not the case for me today um it was just an unfortunate ride that we all sometimes have so i'll get into that a little bit later but a couple of quick announcements um things are going great in florida i know i promise i will get more our, um, interviews with the horses. Um, I might even do Gideon tomorrow at the horse show because why not? Um, we had some really good lessons with Allie this week. That was exciting. Apollo is learning some things. So really fun. Uh, everyone's going pretty good. Knock on, knock on some wood. And yeah, number nine of my podcast just went out on Friday and that, or is coming out. It's setting yourself up to have a successful horse show. So all of you who are working towards showing, it can give you a nice, you know, idea of what to focus on and what to do for your horses to help have a really successful horse show. From everything from hand walking to getting there early to, you know, memorizing your tests, like whatever works for you. Um, I just share a little bit what works for me. And so that's on the podcast coming out. And what's really fun is we're on, we're getting on more platforms. So it's really exciting. It's called Dressage Life with JJ Tate. And we talk about horses and training and interpersonal things of all, all kinds of things. Because as all of my students know and all the trainers I mentor, I mean, and all you guys on here, I'm pretty open about talking about everything <laughs> So um, we are on Spotify and Pocket Cast and Stitcher. And so we are working on getting on some more platforms. We're just waiting for, I think they need to like um, okay it, it in administration. So we're excited about that. And that's really fun that that's starting to like take off. I'm going to start my interviews next week. I've got a bunch of friends lined up to chat with me. So I can't wait to eventually share that with you guys as well. And we have the next enrollment for the Team Tate Academy. So that is going to be March, what, 13th through the 20th. So we're slowly gearing up for that. And that's really exciting because we just can't wait to share it with you guys. And we're going to have a lot of fun uh, challenges for you guys to have a little fun on here on Team Tate TV and I would love you guys to check out the Academy. Um, if you are at home training your horse by yourself, if you want to get more information out of your lessons, if you want to understand things deeper, 
It's a once a week educational video where I'm writing and writing with a microphone and talking you through it. And it's really part of the program that has made my horses successfully get to the Grand Prix. And yeah, we just are so excited to share it with everybody. So we hope you check out the next enrollment. And yeah, I mean, let's talk about horse shows because first off, bless you for having the courage to even go out there. There is a lot of people, a lot of people, very good riders, you know, a lot of good riders out there. But it is one thing to even just give yourself the credit for getting out there because that's kind of a big deal to put yourself out there, to put your work out there and to put it out there on the line for everyone to see and basically judge. And that doesn't mean everyone needs to show. Like I absolutely, you know, I've got a lot of wonderful ladies in my barn and we don't, we don't put any pressure on them to compete. I personally like to compete. I think it really brings my riding up to the next level. I always joke that, I mean, would you really study if you were never tested on the information? <laughs> so for me, it's like this self-actualization of how well am I riding and how well am I training my horse and can I do this set pattern exactly where they say to do everything? Like, can I do that? It really keeps my riding sharp. So that's really important for me too. Cause I think it's really easy to just like ride around and I have all this feel and I'm just thinking I'm doing a good job. And then it's, uh, it's sometimes good to like really test yourself and say, is it actually as good as I feel it is? Because how it looks and how it feels can also be different. So yeah, so today I went out and, uh, got the worst score I've gotten on this wonderful, wonderful horse named Gideon. He is amazing and he's been going better than ever. So it was a real disappointment to experience that today. And I'm not embarrassed and I don't regret showing and I don't love him any less. Um, and I think it's really important to really always remember like why we're doing this and how to handle disappointment with grace. Grace is one of my favorite words. And whenever I feel myself a little bit personally challenged, like I have to go inside and say, I need to find my grace to handle this difficult situation, you know, or this disappointment, you know, and I've put myself out in public and it didn't go exactly how I planned. And you know what? I can keep my chin up because I'm proud of my work. Um, something I was always thinking too is um, we put so much pressure on ourselves to do such a, you know, great ride, you know, that like this five minutes is like blah, this big thing. And it's really part of this like continuum of, Am I getting better? You know, and I love it. Gail, Gail Kelm, who's my first trainer ever in my whole life. Um, she said, isn't showing asking another trainer's opinion. And that's exactly, that's exactly right. And, you know, we have to remember that we all love horses and we all want us to ride better, you know, so it all has to come from this great place. But this idea of, not putting so much pressure on ourselves. And I, I feel like that's also part of the grace thing as well. Just how you approach the horse show and, and that kind of thing. But I, I also wrote down, you know, that you will live to fight another day. Like, I know sometimes we think that we're just going to die because it just didn't go great. And it's not, you know, what you wanted to have happen. But the big question is always, did you learn something like that was not a great ride today, but did I learn something that is going to help me going forward? You know, at the end of the day, like life is all about 
staying open to the lessons that are being provided. And it's really up to us and our awareness to see those and, and be aware of those and learn something good from that. So I also think about a lot of times like what happened? Like what was I not happy with? Like what actually happened? And what could I do to change the outcome for the next time? And that can be anything from I warmed up too long. I didn't warm up long enough. Oh, you know, one of the things I really work on, and you'll hear that if you listen to my podcast about preparing for a successful show, is a lot of times I always, you know, cross every T and dot every I. So if I need to, if there's an opportunity to hand walk, I'm going to hand walk. If there's an opportunity to tack walk under the lights, I'm going to do it. Like I just don't like surprises. And so it is really about, did I do everything I could have done to the best of my ability with what I know to create the positive outcome? And yes you know and then it can still like not go great (laughs) and that's also okay you know it's really important about um being able to see this all as like a continuum and the bigger picture uh and the reasons and sometimes the reasons like things don't work out great aren't even clear yet um and lisa hickey who's one of my favorite people in the whole world she always says, more shall be revealed. So maybe you don't even understand it yet. Like I kind of came out of the ring today and I was like, I don't even know what he was doing in there today. Like he just did not want to pee off. And that's not a thing for him. Like that's not a thing for him. Gideon is an amazing horse and he's changed so much in the last year that I was really excited to show that off and he just was like not not into it he was just not that into it today and then he came out and you know had a big manure in the warm-up after the test so of course that would have been way better had he done that before the test but like I mean I can teach horses to do a lot of things but I cannot I can't teach them to do that um you know so that's like okay how do i change that and maybe just today was a bad luck day and if something similar happens again tomorrow like okay let's like shift the the gear and sometimes the things aren't aren't clear yet you know and more shall be revealed and that could be maybe the saddle in the long term is not the, the best idea Maybe you didn't feel prepared enough with your coach or you felt really uh, negative about the horse or the test or whatever going into, you know, there is very much an art of making your, ho- making your riders feel prepared and ready to go to the horse show. Like that's a whole nother art and we can talk about that on another uh, Wine About It Wednesday. But, you know, all these things aren't maybe clear at the moment but just even being open to seeing it at some point, I think can be a really important thing. You know, thinking back on my performance today, I would also say Gideon and I are in the middle of a change and we're in like in the middle of an adjustment, which is good, which in the long run is great. I'm changing things about my position. I'm changing things about the honesty to my aides. Uh, we're changing his level of submission and cooperation and electricity and to put that all together and put that in a test with no whip in front of five you know olympic level judges is not so easy like i get that um but it's also i felt prepared he feels super and we just need to get it together better and tweak some things that we learned about today as well. I think also that with those changes, like the dust hasn't really settled yet. Like we're not secure in those new changes enough 
to let that really be the way we are now. And so we're sort of in this moment of flux. But then again, that's what life is all about. You know, we don't ever want to stay too firm and stiff and steady. And I've said this before in a lot of other podcasts uh, as well, because I, in myself, used to be very like, "Mm, I am really secure in exactly how I feel about this and exactly what I think about that. And like, "Mm, I'm really stubborn about that. And I, it's like, I feel it in my backbone. And that's great to have a backbone, 100%. But then if you get to the same, staying in the same way, then you get a little bit stuck. And so I've changed this um, deep, strong standing, like the oak tree. I've now changed my version of being able to surf on the waves of change in my life. So when a big change comes along, it doesn't uproot me and completely like throw me off my game. It's like, okay, that was a big wave. Okay, surfing over here, but not falling off the surfboard and not running into the beach and forgetting the whole thing. It's like, you don't want to get off the the ride of life (laughs) or the wave of life or whatever. So you got to stay on the board and you got to just adjust to those things. And again, like riding is so similar to life in this whole, I mean, even just think about what the coronavirus has done for us. Like if we were not able to pivot and adjust, you know, times were tough and times are still tough. And like, God bless everyone uh, in the world who are dealing with repercussions from this difficult, difficult year. But again, it's, it's about, you know, pivoting and adjusting and keep moving forward. So when I talk about the idea of grace, and I also think having a little bit of humor helps too with dealing with disappointment, but I do have to share, I've definitely done my fair share of temper tantrums in the tack room after the ride of, you know, I didn't ride this well and I'm now mad at myself and now I'm mad at the horse and he didn't do this and my trainer didn't tell me to do that. And, you know, it's just like you're disappointed and that's okay. Like it's completely okay to be disappointed. But it's also important not to get super angry and for sure not shameful about what happened because we can change it. If you didn't like what happened, we can adjust and we can make a change. And I always like to see things in a really factual way. It's really easy to get heated up in the moment and get really jazzed up about it. And a lot of times if you just recognize the facts and sometimes you might even want to write them down, it's much easier to be like, oh yes, he's only been doing this level for three months or, oh yes, I was late getting on and so I didn't walk him the normal 15, 20 minutes I normally do at home. Like you just got to kind of see it, step back from it emotionally and see it for what it really is. And we can always ride better or prepare differently and, and improve, you know, and there's always that good question to ask, should I adjust and change my plan for tomorrow? And There are times to completely stick to your plan. And then there are also times to upgrade your plan. Like what I learned, what I learned about that, I'm going to adjust for tomorrow and I'm going to upgrade my plan. But you know, then I, then I laughed about that because knowing the difference of sticking to your plan and having the, the wherewithal to see it through, through the plan and then You don't want to change everything too quickly and be like, ah, I need to change my plan because it's not working. Like, you know, I said, knowing the difference, that's where the magic lives, you know, because you don't want to abort mission too quickly because maybe you were really on to something. And so I think it's uh, important to just have those thoughts in your mind of like when the tiniest little thing goes wrong, that doesn't mean like, ah, 
yeah, you know, forget it all. I gotta change it all. Because then it just becomes chaos. And with horses, we always wanna give them order. I mean, they live in an orderly fashion with their herds and we have to also bring that to them as well. And I also wanna say, no one is immune to disappointment. Even sometimes if you get this great score and you had this great ride and everyone is like, oh my God, you're such a beautiful rider and your horse is so amazing. You and yourself, that may have looked great to the people watching, but maybe you felt something that oh, I've really been working on that half pass to the right and I just, I just didn't have it where I needed it. And so how things look from the outside and how they are on the inside, we always have to be um, knowing that everybody feels disappointment sometimes. Even the best rider you've ever seen or Isabel Worth, you know, I'm sure she's disappointed with things too sometimes and that to really normalize that and make that normal. I think it's also <laughs> a good idea to have your best laid plans laid down and then sometimes it just it just doesn't work and to not like completely freak out about it I think is important and I think we all need to ask always those questions of you know does this horse need a correction did I give him too big of a correction it's not working anymore what should I do and then again, just take a breath and just do the next right thing. And Catherine had a great ride today and she said disappointed a lot of the time. I know I feel like we're probably disappointed more often about how we could have done things better or oh, I should have put more leg on right there and, you know, experience is the thing we get right after we needed it, you know, so it's like it's just always this experiencing and figuring out what's the next best way to do something. You know, I think about when we're talking about making a correction, you know, I think about the flying changes. So often we can make this big, big correction to be like, like get in front of my leg. And then the horse is like nervous about that. And then the next time you go to do the change, he's like expecting that. He's like, oh, you know, and so then you've got to find your blend of like he needs to be sharp on your leg, but not tense from your leg. He needs to be alert and on your leg and with your leg, but not scared, you know, of the leg. And so that is, you know, always that fine line. Yeah, and as Catherine just said, <laughs> hashtag life of a perfectionist. It's so true. And as I were all obsessed with this sport of like, what can I do better? How could I have ridden those six minutes all perfectly? And, you know, that's just never going to happen and that's okay. But it just keeps us obsessing about getting better. And that's really at the end of the day, you know, why we do it. Even if it's not the outcome that I wanted from the test or the result or whatever, I'm learning something from it and I know I'm, I'm getting better. And that's, you know, and that's going to make me a better trainer for tomorrow and for the horses I ride next week. And, you know, always striving to um, improve on, on that, you know. And the more, the more hours we get with the gift to be in the saddle at a horse show, in the Grand Prix, at the international level, I mean, that is just such a gift. And, you know, it really comes down to when you're feeling disappointed at the horse show and it didn't go as you planned and you didn't ride as well as you hoped. You know, we, we have this rule of like, you have a short amount of time to feel sorry for yourself <laughs> and then you need to get on with it. I remember at Young Riders, I had a, Terrible ride. I think it was last. It was the first year I went. 1996. So a really long time ago. And I was terrible. And my horse was very sweet, but he also thought I did terrible. <laughs> so I was crying. I was in my horse trailer. 
I think I was pretending to like scoop feed or something. And finally my mom came to get me and she's watching tonight. <laughs> and she's like, okay, well, you know what? He's hungry. So you need to, you need to get out of the trailer and like go feed your horse. So that's kind of a joke that we have of like, okay, um, time's up to go feel sorry for yourself. So, you know, I always say now, as I always say, like this too shall pass. And as orphan Annie used to sing about or sings about, the sun will come up tomorrow. So we always have to keep that in mind. And as long as we are keep, we keep learning and we keep pivoting and adjusting and, and learning from our not so great experiences, you know, just like with anything, we just got to get back up there, dust ourselves off and get back on. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I made it a little short tonight because um, we're going to get on at 645 in the morning to tack walk in the morning. So um, yeah, it's going to be early morning. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining and cheers to doing the next right thing. More shall be revealed. Keep on keeping on, chopping the wood. We don't get better by not showing up. So I hope when you get the chance, you show up. All right, have a great night, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye.